Hello, hello. We are in session number two of this last week. Uh, we are just going to end this session. Uh, and then we are going to have just two more uh, hours in two different days. Uh, so we are going to complete this course in two days. So we are going to continue with the part that we were uh, learning yesterday. And we were talking about the this topic that is called conditionals. But in that case, we were talking about the unreal conditional. But we were talking about the um, the ideas of something imaginary. Uh, so we are going to continue with that part because it's like we can uh, understand that in this case we are talking about a uh, something that we can imagine. But also this kind of conditional have a specific structure in which we need to, to follow to complete that kind of information that we can give to others. So uh, in that case, it, it, we have a kind of lot of information because we are going to see how to use the unreal uh, conditional in the spoken language or in our daily conversation. But also we are going to see how to mix the tenses because it was saying that we can use it for present, for future, for past, but also we can make a mix with the tenses. So in that case, at the end of the explanation of, of all of the uh, information that we have about the unreal conditional, we are going to talk about the uh, mixture of these um, tenses in which we are going to know how to create these sentences in which we are going to see how to create a unreal conditional with present and with the other tenses. So we are going to see that uh, or we are making like um, a short review, a very, very short review of the, in, the information that we have about the unreal conditional too. Keep understanding what it is this topic about. So, something very important that we know that uh, about the conditional, the real and unreal conditional, is that they have two parts one that is the condition, and two that is the result. So, like in the real conditional, the unreal conditional also have this the same structure the condition and the result. And it was saying that unreal conditional are like the real condition, uh, conditional, but with unreal situation. Es la misma estructura para los reales que para los irreales. So, solo que la situación, en realidad la condición es la que cambia, porque en este caso es una condición imaginaria, poco probable de que suceda o imposible. So, we are just imagining what we will do in a situation that is not real or very unlikely to be real. So in that case, we were talking about the different uh, examples in which we can use the unreal situation. Like um, in this one, if I were an animal, I would be a lion that is impossible because we cannot make that big transformation of our bodies. Uh, we're not going to change into a, a, a lion or something like that. But in that case, we are using the conditional. Then we have the example of the lottery. We know that in some cases, some people is lucky enough to uh, win the lottery, but uh, we know that it's very, very difficult to, to do something like that. So in that case, um, we're not going to use it uh, with a real conditional because it is not something really easy. So in that case, um, no lo podemos poner en el real porque si sí es una situación real, si sí lo entendemos como una situación real, pero 
estamos diciendo que es una situación muy, muy, muy difícil y es improbable, ¿verdad? Que a todos nos pase. Sí podemos encontrar personas que han ganado la lotería, pero no todos vamos a tener esa misma suerte. Entonces, por eso lo que estamos en unreal situation. If I met the president, I would want to tell him to lower taxes. Again, this is something possible. Yes, it's something possible. It's something that uh, it can happen once in our time or once in, in our life. But it is like very, very difficult to talk with the president like a casual or a casual um, conversation because in that case, when you are going to meet the president, you are going to talk with them or with him about something very specific because you are part of our organization, you are part of our group. So in that case, you are not going to talk about that, that kind of idea with the president because it is not relevant for them in that moment. Then it says that we can use the conditional in the present, the past and the future. That was um, like I was saying, we can use this uh, unreal conditional with all of the tenses that we have in English. But also we can make mixture of this. So that is the last part that we are going to see. So it says that we have the first part that is present and future conditional. And we uh, were talking about that. These conditional talk about what we will do in a real situation, obviously. We are just imagining or thinking about it. It is not real or it's very unlikely to be real. Again, we know that information because we were talking about that the real uh, conditional are like this. So, in that case, we have two different uh, structures. The number one is in, uh, in one, we are going to write the condition at the beginning of the sentence. And the second one, we are going to uh, write the result at the beginning of the sentence. And it is completely valid. Vamos a tener dos estructuras siempre para lo que es el eh, Unreal Conditional. Lo podemos eh, tener, primero, poniendo la condición al principio de nuestra estructura, is when plus condition plus then, que es el resultado. So, Y en el segundo, vamos a tener el resultado al principio, if, when, plus the condition. Pero ya decíamos que podemos utilizar en el pasado, would, could, might, may, para crear nuestras oraciones. And we have some examples here. Then, in this case, we were uh, making a specification in which it's saying only is is to give the condition for present and future on real conditional and we are not going to use when because this word is only used when we are talking about real conditional so in that case we are not going to use when with these structures and something that we were talking about also is that we are not going to use what with the unreal conditional, we are going to use where with every subject. But also we were saying that it depends on the way in which we want to express the idea. So in that case, it is not a big problem. Then we have the other one that it says, we can also use continuous form with this conditional, that is the ing form of the verb, in which we can uh, use this, um, uh, on real conditional. Then we have the uh, future. We have two other ways in which we can express this on real conditional. And it says that future on real conditionals can look the same as present, but there are two different ways to make future on real conditional. It is just like when we use the present continuous or going to, and we have the structure if plus condition plus then the result. 
or the result plus if plus condition. The condition uses the continuous form where plus present participle we're going to plus verb. Así que lo último que vimos fue esto, ¿verdad? Que la condición o el eh, on real conditional usa, ¿verdad? Lo que es la forma continua del de verbo, el ing. En este caso, again, we are not going to use was. Vamos a poner siempre el where porque es la estructura que estamos siguiendo. Pero ustedes saben que sí pueden utilizar el was. Luego agregamos el presente participio, que lo podemos tener de la siguiente forma. We're going to plus the verb. Y esa es, ¿verdad? La estructura que vamos a seguir. Nos habíamos quedado en esta parte y vamos a continuar desde ahí. Uh -huh. So, let me see. Then we have that in this part, we need an structure also. That is the result also uses the continuous form and we have will be la present participle. And it says a present participle is formed by adding ing to the end of a verb. In this case, we are talking about that. Um, this is the continuous, and we can also spell it like that, the continuous. And we have the example. And it says, if I were going to the trip next week, I will be taking time off work. If I were going on the trip next week, I will be taking time off the work. Si fuera a hacer el viaje la próxima semana, me tomaría mi tiempo, ¿verdad? Del trabajo, o sea, como que tomaría una pausa en el trabajo. If I were going on the trip next week, I will be taking time off work. So in that case, we were talking about the future. Now we are going to talk about the past. So in that case, it says the past on real conditional are very important, but they can be difficult for English learners. Remember that this kind of um, topic related to grammar and a structure complicated like this, it's going to be hard to understand at first, but you are going to see this topic a lot in this process. So this is just like, I don't know if this is the first time in which you are uh, like seeing this topic, but we are creating, we are gaining information about this kind of topic. So in that case, it is not like we are going to stop just with this information because you know that uh, we have a lot of information, uh, different explanations, and all of that things. So in that case, it's just to create knowledge. And, it is, and this one said that they are a little different than other conditionals. And we use past on real conditionals to talk about things that have already finished. The event or a thing is finished, but we are imagining what we would or could do differently if we did it again or if it happened again. En este caso, así como en el pasado eh, simple, 
Vamos a hablar de eh, acciones que ya finalizaron, que ya terminaron, que ya no hay vuelta atrás, o sea, ya terminó. Eh, pero que nosotros nos estamos imaginando qué hubiera pasado si, si hubiéramos hecho las cosas diferentes, si hubiéramos tenido oportunidad de cambiar algo. Es como el, el desear querer cambiar algo en esa situación. So, in that case, it's something that is finished, but we are imagining something. Um, that maybe we can or could change in the past. We know that it's not possible because it had finished. We are going to write the specifications to know that yeah, we are talking about first. So, so in this case, we are just to take the most important thing. First, we are talking about a specific like activities that end in the past. That is the first thing. Algo que ya terminó en el pasado. But we are thinking, we are imagining, we are wishing, we are Having a desire. Estamos imaginando, deseando, queriendo, tratando de pensar. If I maybe do something different, what maybe will happen in that situation? So in that case, it's not like we are going to change anything, but we like to imagine things. So, they are little different. Than the other conditional. And we have here, we use as unreal, conditional to talk about things. Yeah, we can change things that I have already finished. So in this case, we are going to mark this one to talk about things that I have already finished. Que es como la parte más importante de saber que algo ya terminó, ya tuvo finalización en el pasado, obviamente. And then, the event or thing is finished. But we are imaginating. What we will or could do differently So here again, we are going to mark the important thing. So in this case, we are imagining this thing is going to change it. We are imagining what we would or could do differently if we did it again or if it happened again. So in that case, maybe we have like a meeting and we make a mistake when we were talking. That is something very common. 
But when this, uh, when this situation ends, we maybe make a reflection. So in that case, we are going to imagine, imagining that something could change. Es bien común que hagamos este tipo de, de situaciones cuando pasó algo que nos incomodó y que no nos pareció, ¿verdad? Que no quedamos satisfechos con eso. Y que nos imaginamos qué hubiera pasado si eh, no me hubiera puesto nervioso, si no me hubiera caído, si no me hubieran visto, si hubiera ido más preparado, si hubiera estudiado. All of that things. So in that case, it's very, very easy to, to understand that part. It is like when we are getting in a time machine, just imagining a thing, it's like we are getting in a time machine and going back in time and doing something again, but changing one thing. So in that case, we are a, talking about the meeting in which I make a mistake and I have a time machine. And I decide to go back to that moment in which I make the mistake and correct that part because I am not feeling well with that situation or with the result or that meeting. So in that case, it, we are imagining something that is not going to happen. So So we have the exposure and we have number one and it says, if condition and again, plus the result or obviously in the same way, the result plus if plus the condition. And it says that the condition is in the past perfect. For the result, we are going to use will have plus past participle, could have plus past participle, or might and may have in the past participle. Así que, como tenemos siempre dos partes, ¿verdad? La primera, que es la condición, va a ir en pasado perfecto, ¿verdad? Va a ir en esa estructura del pasado perfecto. Y para el resultado, vamos a utilizar el will have con el pasado participio. O vamos a utilizar el could have con el pasado participio siempre. O vamos a utilizar el might, may have y el pasado participio.
So in that case, we can use three different points uh, to write the, the, the result. So in that case, we have three different uh, uh, structures to write the result. And we have uh, some examples. We have for the first one, we're going to use this one. We have, if I had a study harder, I will have passed the test. Um, for naturally, eh, I did not study hard. Tenemos esa situación bastante común. Si hubiera estudiado más, si hubiera estudiado bien, si hubiera estudiado de una manera más consciente, hubiera pasado el examen. Pero no estudié lo suficiente. So in that case, it's a situation in which we can um, we can use these specific uh, conditionals, the, the real conditional, because we are talking about a situation that we, we know what is the problem in that case. We know that we need to study, but in that moment, it's like, oh, I am not feeling well. I, I am feeling sleepy. Um, I am born and, and, and I need to do something else and we are watching television and, and we are talking with our friends and we are like doing a lot of things, but we are not studying. So in that case, we are, or, or we know that what is the situation that in the moment we do not do anything to change that. But when the time comes, we say, why? Because I need to do it, but I can change that part. But if I could, I would like to change that part in which we are not studying at all. So that is a very, very true situation. The second one said, we would have had a good time if you had come to the party. Nosotros hubiéramos tenido un muy buen momento si hubieras venido a la fiesta. Right? In that moment, maybe that person has some work to do or he or she was sick or something like that. So in that case, we cannot change that situation. Third one, it says, if she had studied harder when she was in university, she could have become a doctor or lawyer. But in that moment, that the person didn't like to study, so maybe she or he didn't end the university or something like that, or maybe she chose another, another career or something like that. Number four, they could have finished on time if you had helped them. Why didn't you help them? 
hubieran terminado a tiempo si tú los hubieras ayudado. ¿Por qué no los ayudaste? That is another uh, very, very true situation that we can say in a different context, in, in classes or in the school, the university, even in the work. So this is a very true situation. And number five, that is the last uh, example, it says, she might have got the promotion if she hadn't gotten in that big fight with the manager. Ella hubiera tenido la promoción, o sea, promoverla de un puesto a otro, si ella no hubiera tenido esa pelea, ¿verdad? Con el supervisor. That is something really bad. So I think it's going to it's going to rain or something like that because I have some situation with the the energy, not with the connection, with the energy. We hope that we can finish the the, the session first. And it says that we can also use the continuous verb uh, forms in this conditional. Así que podemos utilizar también la forma del continuo, o sea, el, el, el ING, con este, estas situaciones, ¿verdad? Con este tipo de condicional o con este tiempo en el que estamos utilizando el condicional. Yeah, it's going to rain. It's, it's like announcing that it's going to rain right now. So we have the example for this one. And it says the number one, they could have finished yesterday if they hadn't been arguing all day. The second one, if she had been working hard, then she could have finished a long time ago.
And the last one is test. If you had been paying attention, then you wouldn't have gotten in the accident. And it says that only use if to give the condition for unreal conditional. And also it's saying that we are not going to use when. Unreal conditionals and real conditional are extremely important, but there are many small differences that we need to remember. It is important that you spend enough time studying and practicing these sentences. So we know that a uh, Maybe we say, um, I'm not going to use that because it is too complicated. But at the end, we are going to use this kind of conditional, the real and the unreal conditional, even if we are not thinking about using these conditional. But there are parts of the language that we are learning. And I'm going to, um, right here more examples of the unreal conditional because you're going to see the different uh, the different kind of examples that we are going to uh, have in this uh like topic and then we are going to create uh some sentences we are going to have an, an exercise and then it's not like hard because um i will write the longer part of the sentence and you are going to complete with the action. En el, en el ejercicio, voy a ponerles la mayor parte de información que necesitan en la oración y ustedes solo van a agregar los detalles que faltan con información que ustedes le quieran poner. So in this case, it's just to practice in the, the construction of this kind of like uh, sentences. So in that case, we're going to have like the exercises at the end. So I'm going to write examples and then we're going to see the exercises. We are, if I were in New York, I will meet you. Number two, if I didn't have to come to station, I will go to office.
So we have here the symbol. Let's see. If I were in New York, I would meet you. If I didn't have to come to the station, I will go to the office. If you have participated in the contest, you could have won the first prize. If they had reached the airport on time, we could have met them before leaving. If Jack's brother had visited me in the office, I could have given him all the books. The team would have helped you with the project if you had asked them earlier. If I had a billion dollars, I would buy a big house. If Jennifer had practiced harder, he could have performed better at the competition. If I were the president, I would work for the peace of the world. If I were a painter, I would not turn him. And if I had a little more space on my phone, I could have the loan the app. So in that case, we are talking about imaginary situation. So I will write the sentence in which you are going to work. Uh, you are going to construct the imaginary things. So in that case, it is not like we have just one answer because you are constructing your uh, own situation. We're going to have, let me see, two, four, six, eight. I mean, we are going to have 10 sentences. Vamos a tener 10 oraciones donde yo voy a poner, ¿verdad? Algunas eh, estructuras y ustedes solo las van a completar. Así que mientras yo las voy escribiendo, ustedes las pueden ir analizando y ver qué pueden escribir. Cuando ya tengan ustedes sus oraciones, eh, Pueden escribirlas en el chat, en la cajita del chat, y las vamos a ir leyendo. In that case, you can choose three, three sentences. Tres de las oraciones ustedes las van a escoger y las van a escribir completas en el chat. So, we are going to start.
So there we have the 10 uh, structure or sentences in which we are going to work right now. And we have the number one. If I won the lottery, I will, and you need to put the things that you are going to do if you won the lottery. Number two, if I had more time today, then I will, and we are going. I don't know if you want to say something. No, okay. So we have, if I had more time today, then I will. Then the number three, this is more incomplete. She will if she, she will if her boyfriend. I will visit, and this one is the most complete sentence. I will visit if I could travel anywhere in the world. Number six, if I could speak English fluently, then I will. Number seven, I wouldn't be studying English now if I will have if they could have if and he wouldn't have if. Tenemos unas que están muy incompletas, que ahí sí tenemos que darle más información, como lo es la número 3, 4, 8, 9 y 10. Ahí sí tenemos que completarlas, ¿verdad? Eh, con más información. Pero la 1, la 2, la 5, la 6 y la 7 están bastante completas. So, now you can choose three of these sentences and then you can write on the chat your answer or your complete sentence. Van a escoger tres, las van a completar y les van a poner en el chat y les vamos a ir leyendo para ver cómo les quedan las estructuras de esas oraciones. So, I will give you some time and then you can begin writing the structures.
we have just four minutes, so if you can begin writing your uh, sentences, it will be fine. So let's see the first one. If I won the lottery, I will buy a beautiful house that is a big, big, uh, I mean, that is a really good sentence. If I won the lottery, I will buy a car. She will study more if she has time, good. I will visit you if I could travel anywhere in the world. Oh, amazing, that are very good sentences. Thank you. Then it says, if I won the lottery, I will buy a house, good. I will visit Canada if I could travel in the, in the world. She will have eaten if she were more organized, good, thank you. In the number one, you are using ing, and no, it is not. She will say yes if her boyfriend proposed to get married. Oh, good. Good, 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 really good. If I won the lottery, I will, yes. In that case, it's better to say I will buy. So it is not necessary to add the ing. In that case, yes, you can change it. So, okay, thank you for your participation with the sentences. I will add, I mean, I will add the information to the document or the, uh, in which we can meet the tenses. I will have, a, I wouldn't have a, have a goal if you could come. Okay, I will add the information for the change or the mix of the tenses when we are using the, in this kind of uh, conditional, and you are going to find the information here in the document. But now it's time to end the session, and we are going to have just two more sessions to end this of course and if you are not uh, done with your work on the platform you need to do it this way so we are going to end here and we are going to see each other tomorrow have a really really good night and let me see just the last one it says if i had more time today then i will study uh, french or german good thank you see you tomorrow Thank you, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.